We're the Indie Project, B and Theo, and we've been living and travelling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats, Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. Good morning, welcome back to a new video. I've just been out in the car and I have acquired something that's gonna be pretty useful for us coming up to the summer. So let's take a look inside at this big white box. What it is, it's a gas cooker. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a little outside kitchen area. So like I said, in the summer, we can cook outside because inside it's going to be horrific starting the cooker inside and the oven and all that kind of stuff because like i keep mentioning it gets up to 40 degrees in this area which is very warm very very warm and the more you can do outside the better i know we were looking for like a barbecue style gas um, cooker but this came up completely free so saved we're gonna use that we saved ourselves a lot of money which is always nice so yeah we just need to come up with a plan now see what wood we've got and we can start to build something that this can sit on I'd like to say a huge thank you to Squarespace who have kindly sponsored today's video. If you don't know what Squarespace is, it's a fantastic online platform where you can build and design your very own professional looking website. There's loads of different themes for you to choose from and they're completely customizable. So you can change the text, change the color, drag and drop different features in or remove them if you don't like them. I really enjoy having a podcast, a shop, even a blog on our very own website with Squarespace. There's also a logo maker, which is incredibly handy. And I really enjoy looking in the back end of our website, checking out the analytics, seeing where people have come from all over the world and what it is on our website that they like the look of. So if you'd like to try out Squarespace, just head to squarespace.com forward slash indie projects and get a 10% discount and a two week free trial. All you need to do is click the link in our description. I hope you enjoy it just as much as we do. Be the same as this, which is 60. Let me write it down. Okay. Should be pretty simple. So 
when Theo brought the oven over to the veranda, we remembered that we have this really lovely pizza oven stand that's made of metal and is perfect for an outdoor kitchen and it would work really nicely with the oven. So that saves us a lot of building work. Don't need to build this section now, but we do still need to build a stand for the oven to go on because right now it's very low. <laughs> and then we also thought we'll get it going all the way to probably here. So we'll have the oven here and then next to that the gas bottle which will be in an enclosed container thing so you can't see it and there's more work surface over that. The good thing about this oven as well is it has this lid thing on it so when that's down that also acts as more work surface which is brilliant. So the key with this project is just to use stuff that we've already got on the property. We don't want to buy wood just for this little... Can you be quiet please? <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to use any shop brought wood like we just want stuff that we got lying around left over from other projects because it's not worth it for this temporary measure so I'm going to see what we got under here and then I'll have a look in our greenhouse shed situation slash sauna <laughs> And then I'll look under there as well. We've got a roofing sheet with loads of different kinds of wood left over from different projects. So I'm sure we're gonna have enough and we can Frankenstein something together. Is that chestnut back? It's chestnut. I wonder if we could use this really wide stuff as like the work surface. Possibly, yeah, we could cut down one of them for sure. It's only a small piece that needs it anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna be like anything and everything we can use, use it. Rustic! <laughs> Theo and Ricky have just had to head out because I had a phone call from a delivery driver saying that he had our chipper and he couldn't get to our place so Theo had to go out and meet him so that's really exciting they've gone off to get it it's been a long time coming to be honest I actually forgot that we'd ordered it so when the guy called I was like what on earth what could they have it's the chipper this is pretty cool Look what has just arrived, our new chipper, which it's a bit frustrating because it kind of came at the wrong time because we just burnt everything because we did reach out to the company and they said it wouldn't be arriving for weeks and we ordered it probably three weeks ago. So it's taken a long time to get here, but suddenly the delivery driver was just here and he couldn't get to our property in a massive like lorry basically. So thanks to the truck, we were able to drop it down off the back of the lorry, straight into the back of the truck. And it's on a pallet. It's an absolute beast of a chipper. It's very exciting. We just don't need to use it right now. So it's going to stay in that condition for a little while until we need to use it. So I've really simplified the method of how we're going to build this so that we can use as little wood as possible and I've just cut down the pieces that I have to size and now I'm going to start screwing it together. I've just gone through the sauna and had a look and found these screws. So I've got some hundreds, I've got some eighties knocking around and I'll just make them work.
So I have just set up the oven on the plinth that I've just made and it's absolutely rock solid. You can push it around, it doesn't really move at all, which is good because we don't want to be cooking a nice meal and then it fall off midway through. And I can just flip this up. We can cook whatever we want in there. We got a nice size oven. This is going to be so useful throughout the summer. And then obviously over here, we've got our nice big work surface, which we can clean off easily. We're going to have our pizza oven under here. And I've decided to put the gas bottle. I've took the bottom shelf off and I put the gas bottle under there because it just fits perfectly. And then this side, I still need to attach it all together and fasten it down so it doesn't fall over. But I've got three crates, two on this side and one upright. And that's where we're going to store things like tins, pots and pans on the shelf under here. Just make it so everything is as accessible as possible. And now what I'm going to do, because you can see down here, this is just untreated wood. So I'm going to go dig around in the, uh, in the warehouse and try and find some stain that's left over from another job and stain this up because if it does rain or the sun does get onto this, it could mold or it get damaged. So it's better just to treat it with something. Also, it might get food on it, so it should be easier to clean off if it's got a, a layer of stain on it. So I managed to find some stain left over that we used on the veranda for the chestnut and then a brand new rusted paintbrush. We store loads of these on the property just because you never know when you're going to need to use them. So now I'm just going to give it one coat will do fine. This stuff's really good and uh, it should look really nice as well. Fernando. We have just arrived in Castello Branco and we have come to the vet to take Fernando for a routine checkup. He's really not good in cars, so every time we have to bring him to the vet, it's a big ordeal. And he's only come for a routine checkup, but every time we take him to the vet or we put him in the car, within five minutes, he goes to the toilet. So we have to pull over, clean him, clean the basket that he's in it's an absolute nightmare so i'm just about to open the windows because right now the car smells horrific Yesterday's checkup at the vet for Fernando went very well. He's totally fine. We also had his bloods done, which I think is a first for him, and he didn't really enjoy that, but actually, to be honest, he doesn't enjoy going to the vets at all. It's usually quite a stressful experience for him, so I like to do it as little as possible, but these things can't be avoided. Gotta make sure that he is fit and healthy because he does get into scraps every now and then, and I wanna make sure that he is okay. Thankfully, he is and he's back out roaming like nothing happened. I'm just heading down to the goats to let them out. They absolutely love their new time browsing outside. I think their favorite thing has got to be vine leaves, which is great because we do have quite a few wild vines on the property. So if they can eat those leaves, it means that hopefully they'll just die off because they just, they just grow back, Theo. I was gonna say mows. Theo goes over them every year with the tractor and they just come back like nothing's ever happened.
got my drill, I've got my impact driver, and what I'm gonna do is start fastening the crates together so they don't move and make sure everything's solid. And if you come down here, the stained plinth for the cooker looks so much better now it's stained. It just ties it all into the crates it and the black. It matches the crates really well. It does, it's starting to look a little bit less like it's not meant to be there, if that makes sense. Yeah. But I, we're pretty much ready to cook, to be honest. I just need to fasten the gas together and make sure that's all working. Light it, and you can start foraging. putting the pots and pans, <laughs> foraging our dinner, or our lunch, actually. We can cook some lunch on it. Good idea. That'd be really nice. And we can fill up these side crates with tins and stuff that we use all the time that we can have just on hand, pots and pans, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I've been given the immense honour of doing the first lighting of the cooker. <laughs> you need a ribbon and some scissors. Well, what I'm going to do is just set fire to it instead. I think that's much better. So <laughs> set fire to it. Yeah, literally. Oof. Are you ready? Moment of truth. Are you going to give me a countdown, or shall I just just do it? I'll count you down. Okay, go. Three, two, one. It is lit, but you can't see the flame. <laughs> Super <laughs> underwhelming. It's lit, though. I promise. I can feel the heat. vegetables and if you've been here for a while you would have seen me plant all of these back in I think October it was so I've got broccoli which is still growing really nicely some of them are flowered which I'm gonna use the seeds from them to plant more which is pretty exciting so I'm just harvesting some broccoli I love getting the little shoots off the side it's very cute and we do also eat the leaves they're very nice and then over here I've got another broccoli that I'm gonna use the lettuce is doing so well look at this gonna take some lettuce as well it's a little bit dusty but nothing a quick wash can't sort out you know so yeah we've got lettuce here we've got the broccoli we've got loads of different types of cabbages I did also harvest nine onions which was a proud moment I must say <laughs> and I think the garlic's almost done now so I'm gonna start pulling those out soon but today it's just gonna be a case of getting some lettuce from here and then over on the other bed I've spotted some turnips that are ready and peas, pea shoots, spinach, all those sorts of things. So may as well harvest them whilst they're ready to go, you know, don't want to let anything go to waste. So just got enough from here. This lettuce is so good, you just take bits off the side and it just regrows. This is the same, I've been harvesting from these lettuces for months now, it's brilliant. There's a load of different things here. I've got onions, peas, turnips, spinach, cauliflower. Those are the ones I can remember. And I'm gonna today take some peas, pea shoots, turnips, and any spinach if there's some left because I did do a bit of a savage harvest on it the other day. But these peas are just thriving and you can eat the leaves, you can eat the, you can eat pretty much all parts of the pea plant. 
and the leaves taste like peas it's really nice so i'm just gonna snip off some juicy looking bits and i did also spot quite a few pods earlier down here and they're so delicious look at this i love them I've picked a bunch of wonderful homegrown things to make for lunch and I'm thinking I'm going to make a nice side salad which is going to be full of everything that we've got from our own garden and a veggie pasta. The only things that are going to be used that aren't from our garden is tomatoes and mushrooms and obviously the pasta because to be honest I don't have time to be growing some sort of gluten-free wheat. I don't even know how they make gluten-free pasta. So yeah I'm just going to give everything a wash prep it, sort it all out, and then cook it up on my new cooking station. I'm actually really excited. done it was a nice experience cooking out here i've got to say it being, smells nice thank you hopefully it tastes just as good but being out here really did make me think that in the summer as it starts to heat up i mean it's already starting to heat up i looked on the weather forecast and it's saying 29 degrees celsius next week which is warm so being outside and doing that here is much better because you just don't want to create heat indoors when it's hot outside it's just so pointless so this is a really nice setup super simple to make the pasta i could just chop it all here get it all done cook it on there and then drain it over there it's, it's brilliant so i've made a massive amount we'll probably end up having this for dinner or lunch tomorrow as well and then we've got a salad on the side i put some i pickled some of our onions and i love i just love the taste of it it's really nice and it looks really pretty as well so we've got a little side salad to go with it as well with the peas pea shoots lettuce all that sort of stuff in there so it should be very nice and I've got to say it's a really lovely feeling to eat your own food that you've grown yourself it's just uh, you just enjoy it that little bit more than if it's something that you got from the supermarket I've got to say <laughs> was delicious even if I do say so myself humble as ever but when I was down at the garden getting all the different bits of food that we wanted I realized that all of the grass had grown up quite rapidly in the last week or so so you might be able to hear over what I'm saying right now but Theo's just taken the tractor down to go and mow the grass around there because it's a little bit difficult when some of it's low to the ground I've got one lot of onions growing 
and I did them in a in a plot just straight on the ground so it gets a little bit difficult to differentiate what's weed what's plant that I want to eat <laughs> so it's a good idea to just get that cut down and then it'll look really nice and ready for more because I've got a load of seeds that I want to put in for our summer garden so I'm thinking tomatoes peppers cucumbers you know pumpkins stuff like that so always always on the go when you're growing your own veggies So this is the bed I was talking about. I've got my onions growing in it, but around it we've got all the wildflowers and they're getting quite tall. And around here where my other vegetables are growing, but this is the grass when it's cut. There's a noticeable difference. I'm not 100% sure that he's gonna be able to get the tractor between there. They might have to get the strimmer out for that. Oh, dusty. But it's good to see and Theo loves it. Any excuse to be on the tractor, I tell you. So I think I'm gonna end the video there. Thank you for joining us. It's been another productive couple of days. We've got a lot done. The kitchen is now fully functional outside, which is always good coming into the summer. And I think B is gonna do some planting soon. So we're gonna have more food on the horizon. She made a lovely meal for lunch. And now I'm just gonna take five minutes just to breathe and enjoy the bird song and then get straight back on it. But thank you for joining us and tune in for the next video.